Hello and welcome once again to a 10-minute conversation uh, with Saheed's The Bloom Show, where again, I will focus on things that are going on in mass retail, but specifically the impacts that are occurring in AI. You know I'm all about AI and about automation and all the impacts that continue. New news is hitting daily, daily. It's coming hard and fast. And as you always hear me say, uh, it is it, to this today is the slowest uh, that we'll ever feel. It's going to get faster from here, folks. So let's dive in. First of all, I do want to remind you to please like, please share the video, share the link so folks can follow up and hear me talk today, uh, and, and please subscribe to the channel. So let's dive in. You know, I will have a written podcast that will hit uh, New Bloom's Media next week. Uh, and the first topic of that one that I'm going to talk about today as well is it's not a bubble, folks. It's not a bubble. And the problem with people that talk about AI and technology being a bubble is it gives you an opportunity to say to yourself, ah, it, it, it's not important for me to worry about it yet today. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about investment advice because there's no question that there are companies being built uh, in this new technology of AI and large language models that are going to fail. Not everybody's idea entrepreneurially is going to work, but the big guns are investing like crazy, but they're making money. So it's not like the dot-com bubble of 1999 when you had all these startups that were, had no profit, right? Alphabet just had their first $100 billion quarter, but these are the guys that are investing like crazy in data centers. They're investing, but they're still driving revenue. Amazon had their strongest cloud growth in three years, and they attributed that to AI and AI adoption, Microsoft is up 18% to $78 billion last quarter. This is Microsoft, folks. They were the software company, right? Nobody saw them all of a sudden having this level of revenue growth, but they're investing like crazy, but they're making money because of it. And the one I really want to talk about today is Walmart. Walmart announced their quarterly earnings. They were Their, their like store sales were only up 4%. Uh, you know, it's a tough environment in retail today. And they talked about the cost increases. We know they got hit with tariffs harder than a lot of other retailers. But Walmart's operating income last quarter was up 10 percent. Now, how did they do that? Well, I'll tell you, it's AI and automation. Doug McMillan spoke at a Harvard Business Review event last week, and he highlighted once again, AI will impact every job in the Walmart stream. And Walmart is a hands-on, people-based company, right? You don't think about walking a Walmart store, that AI is going to impact the inside of that store very much. But they asked him at that event, Harvard Business Review event last week, are there any jobs at Walmart that won't be impacted by AI? And he said, you know, there may be one, but I can't think of one right now. He highlighted that cart retrieval from the parking lot, one of those chores that every retailer has to deal with, is going to be impacted by AI. First of all, by being able to keep track and really tell you how to schedule and to alert when it's time to go get that product, to get those carts back. But of course, automated cart retrieval is coming quickly. He, they're testing piloted driverless and autonomous working pieces in their facilities, and that is driving lower costs in their warehousing. Uh, I've got a quote here, AI contributions help lower operational expense by streamlining in spite of disrupting global events. They project that there will be billions to Walmart's bottom line over the next decade through improved margin because of faster growth and high margin digital channels, which is driven by, by AI, but all the automation pieces that are going to uh, that are going to drive their costs down every single day, which means they'll have lower prices than everybody else. And that's that spiral. That's that engine that has driven their growth. So in breaking news today, right, Doug McMillan announced today that he will be retiring in January. And you might say, well, Joe Don, you've been saying that Doug is the one that's all in. So here's a quote that he from in his statement that he sent today stating he was retiring. He says, as when he talks about John Ferner, who is taking over CEO, he says he has the vision and experience to guide our people through a new retail era fueled by innovation 
and AI, a new retail era. Folks, we all live in retail. Every one of us in the floor industry, we are involved in retail. We sell products through retail channels, including .com, but the vast majority today is in bricks and mortar. Whether you're a wholesaler feeding a retail floral shop or you are feeding the mass retail environment in fresh cut flowers, plants, and all of our floral products, we are embedded in a new retail era. We need to be thinking about that. And it's not a bubble. It's something we all need to come to grips with quickly. I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about humanoid, humanoid robots. This is always a fun one for me. Uh, I was at the uh, at the show, you know, the big convention, and I talked a lot with folks. I showed that beautiful video you've seen me post from figure.ai that shows their new robot that they're moving into production with. And that robot is working in homes today, folding laundry, you know, cleaning up after a dinner party, uh, loading the dishwasher. And, and as I showed this video to folks at the big convention, most either laughed and told Terminator jokes or they were kind of shrugged and like, yeah, so what? So what? So let's talk about this for a brief moment. You know, everybody tends to throw rocks today at Elon Musk and what he's doing. Um, it's hard to throw rocks at his strategy, though, when you see that he's, his board just voted over a trillion dollars of wealth for him personally if he hits the targets that they have planned in the next decade, right? And that decade is going to be driven by autonomous cars and robo-taxis, but the big gun is the Optimus humanoid robot. The humanoid robot and everybody jokes about, yeah, but they're being driven by people today and they're clankers. And so he announced this week that he hit regarding the Optimus humanoid robots. They are playing the fastest production ramp in history of any large complex manufactured product for Optimus. This year, they're building a 1 million annual capacity production line, can produce 1 million robots a year in Fremont, California. It will be online by 2026. It is being built right now. 1 million a year. Yeah, okay. That, that's a big number, but their goal is by the end of 2027, and they are building now, they are laying the groundwork at Giga, the Gigafactory, Gigatex, Texas. This is outside of Austin. Their biggest hit right by their headquarters, a new factory that will be able to produce 10 million Optimus robots a year will be online by 2027. And in the five to 10 year timeline, he has a plan and is building a plan with his board for a new factory that will be able to build 100 million robots per year. By the way, I didn't mention the Fremont factory they're building, guess who's working in that factory? Yes, the Optimus robots that they're producing are going to be working in the factory producing more robots. Now, you can be afraid of this. You can think, oh, my God, it's Terminator and, and blah, blah, blah. But, folks, the fact is that a humanoid robot will soon be able to do everything that your human workers will be able to do today They'll be able to seamlessly go move into your workforce, work right beside humans, do the tasks that are the most tedious and most difficult, and you'll be able to do those by leasing a robot for 300 bucks a month, much less than your pay. It's coming rapidly. And I'm telling you that just to make sure you're keeping an eye on it as you think about your new facilities, how you're building out. But, but you don't have to worry that much about humanoid robots because they're going to do anything a human will do. So you don't have to change your warehouse or your capital plan for them. You just need to be aware of them. And those that lean in the way that Walmart is already doing, the way that Amazon is already doing, uh, and, and buy one or lease one, I'd recommend leasing, uh, sooner rather than later to begin testing is going to be important. But I tell you, if you had to focus on anything today, if, you're, if, if I continue to blow your mind and hopefully I'm ratting your cage to realize now is the time as a senior leader, a CEO in the floor industry to embrace this and begin to understand it. Uh, my blog post next week talks about you need to create a pirate team. 
You need a team on your in your company of leaders that spread across most of your business that are the ones that love technology and that want to get together and think about how do they attack this for your company. And here's the four steps you need to think about. Get that get that pirate team and make sure they have authority at your level, CEO and board level to take the time to work on this weekly. The four steps solve a problem. Think about this in terms of what are the problems, where are the where's the friction point today in your business, especially around data and how you manage data, how you deal with customers and fix a problem. But before as you're fixing that problem, fix your data. Your data has got to be clean for AI to work. Put your team on that first. Your data has all got to be together in one lake that AI can function against. So solve a problem, fix your data. Don't chase full automation yet. The idea with AI today is that you want to co-pilot. You want to use the systems to empower your team to do work differently, to change a process, to fix the problem using AI and using systems and using automation with your people. Don't chase full automation yet. It's coming and it depends on the environment. But when it comes to dealing with solving problems, I would say first focus on how you work with your people. And finally, treat the deployment as a live long term project. This is not something where you're going to replace something and done. The pirate team needs to grow this process across all of your business processes. And from there, you'll be able to plug in automation as it comes. Now, if you are investing in warehouse systems today, look closely at the things that people aren't doing or the things that they're doing with equipment. Think about driverless forklifts. Think about your racking and how potentially you could use automated racking to move pallets around. That is available today, and that's a great investment as opposed to buying more forklifts. But the things that people are doing with their hands today, it won't be long, and you'll have a humanoid robot to do that. I hope I blew your mind today. I hope you're ready to engage and build that pirate team. Remember, my blog post, my written blog post, will come out on New Bloom Media or New Bloom Solutions uh, next week. Please do share this with your friends. Start a conversation about this with your friends and your coworkers. Like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon. I hope you have a great holiday season. And I will talk to y'all soon. Bye now. The blue showing if they connect them blue. The blue showing if they connect them. Awesome, George.